one more lecture of uh, about rheumatology and in this lecture we will talk about more about uh, some specific things of, about rheumatology uh, plus I will talk about how to take history for rheumatological conditions what are the points to miss what are the things to remember and some general orientation you know uh, how uh, we can approach the patient now uh, <clears throat> first of all I would like to start my story from joint pain uh, joint pain is one of the most common um, you can say complain um, in rheumatology right and uh, like all the story you can say start in rheumatology is from the joint pain uh, now uh, if you will see over here what can be the causes of joint pain number one if someone is complaining of the joint pain it could be articular it could be non-articular so whenever it is non-articular now think about the things which are around the joint for example in the previous lecture we talk about bursa bursitis tendons tendonitis, tendonitis capsule capsulitis as well as muscle sprain and think about the generalized causes non-articular one of course these are systemic type of conditions like polymyalgia rheumatica fibromyalgia microfacial myofacial uh, pain syndrome and of course we will discuss uh, some of them like polymyalgia rheumatica we are going to discuss now Whenever the pain is articular, it can be due to inflammation or it can be due to degeneration. So inflammatory causes are there and degenerative causes are there. Now make this concept. Inflammatory conditions can, can occur at any age and in rheumatology they occur in quite young age degenerative conditions on the other hand they basically occur due to degeneration so degeneration occurs either due to overuse or due to advancing age so for example if you will see over here osteoarthritis which is a primary type of degenerative conditions of course it is not secondary to anything this is a disease of old age okay most of the time the people who have knees arthritis of the knees and they have pain in the knees so things like this and sometimes it could be secondary to other issues like metabolic hemophilic neuropathic or trauma so that's not our discussion inflammatory causes now how we classify them they could be seropositive in which we can found the autoantibodies in the serum they could be zero negative they could be due to crystals deposition and they could be infectious so infections like we know like there is like the infection which affect the joint is like gonococcal as well as non-gonococcal and when it comes to the zero positive um, I will tell you the two uh, most important conditions and basically uh, <laughs> which I told you like they we give like limited hours of lectures so basically we just here give the like lectures about rheumatoid arthritis as well as SLE these are the two very very important uh, conditions as well as scleroderma dermatomyositis polymyositis and children syndrome right okay now Zero negative, you can see that uh, they could be symmetrical as well as asymmetrical. So, what is symmetrical? Uh, when both of the side of the body they are equally and 
involve like ankylosing spondylitis and enteropathic arthritis and asymmetrical reactive arthritis and psoriatic arthritis and the crystal one is, are like gout pseudo gout okay now guys one very 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 easy concept like the most of the, the zero positive conditions or most of the condition which affect the peripheral joints are basically common in women and most of the conditions which are central are more common in males okay <laughs> okay now this is the classification of joint pain i believe like it's very 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 easy right like it's nothing to uh, which will take like much of your uh, brain again like this is the positive of joint pain softer tissue so you can see like sepsis osteoarthritis fracture tendon or muscle pain epiphyseal pain referred pain tumor ischemia zero positive arthritis zero negative one urate like gout or uric acid gout extra articular manifestation rheumatism like polymyalgia rheumatica or fibromyalgia so again like this this, this is this is the mnemonic uh, about uh, what you can say uh, these these one uh, now <clears throat> i will talk about pay a little attention on what is the difference between degenerative as well as inflammatory one so now you can see over here that uh, uh, this is a degenerative one this is the inflammatory one so in degenerative one you will see like there is osteophyte formation spiky bone broken bone and there is cartilage is destroyed there is destruction of the cartilage and there is loss of the joint space right whereas if you will come, will come here the inflammatory one you can see that there is effusion here see there is no effusion rather there is decreased joint space but here there is a fusion normally the fluid is like this much but here the fluid is more there will be synovitis there will be joint space narrowing but not the loss of joint space and there will be cartilage destruction as well okay and there will be bony erosions as well because of inflammation now inflammation is going to affect all these areas equally so few of the differences clinically are like this way that inflammatory condition give pain at rest whereas degenerative conditions give pain with motion inflammatory pains are relieved by motion whereas degenerative pains are relieved by rest and that's the reason anyone who have inflammatory pains they have pain early in the morning pain at rest so when they rest all the night when the morning they have morning stiffness whereas degenerative conditions they have either no or either less than half hour of morning stiffness whenever inflammation is there and you will examine them you will found like their joint space the joint area is warm you can found swelling you can found edema whereas in degenerative condition you will find found joint stability buckling and locking like when they will move their joint they will say like it feels like our joint is locking inflammatory conditions give extra articular manifestations one more thing guys inflammatory pains can wake you up in the night degenerative conditions have pain here the pain is early in the morning here the pain is late like as the day progresses so that's why these degenerative condition people have evening pains evening pains right so rest there are different ways of classifying the joint problems for example you can classify joint problems as uh, um, 
classifications, you can say um, it could be monoarticular versus uh, polyarticular or monoarticular versus posiarticular versus polyarticular. It could be acute versus chronic. Okay. It could be inflammatory versus uh, uh, degenerative, right? It could be seropositive versus seronegative, whatever, right? There are different things. So, of course, like acute versus chronic means like if there's someone is presenting with acute polyarthritis or oligoarthritis, okay, think about infection, think, think about viral infection, think about crystal induced, think about other conditions whenever the condition is chronic, think about zero negative, zero positive, as well as degenerative disorders, right? So it goes like this way. So now, <clears throat> what is the difference between zero positive and zero negative? Now I told you already, zero positive are more common in females, zero negative are more common in males. Zero positive give peripheral arthritis and usually symmetrical involvement is there. For example, the female of rheumatoid arthritis will present with pain in both hands or pain in both feet. Zero negatives are usually asymmetrical. Peripheral arthritis, they are talking about peripheral arthritis, not the axial. Axial means what? Like vertebral column and around that, right? Zero positive affect the small and large joints, whereas zero negative one, they mostly involve the larger joints. One very important difference, guys. In zero positive condition, this is very, very, very important. The distal interphalangeal joints, you know, like what is DIPs and what is proximal interphalangeal joints and what is metacarpophalangeal joints, right? So DIP are less involved, whereas in this one, zero negative, DIPs are involved in psoriatic arthritis. Just for you guys, like, um, this one is DIP, distal interphalangeal joint. This one is PIP, proximal interphalangeal joint. This one is metacarpophalangeal joint, MCP, okay? So, remember this thing. When it comes to the axial or pelvic muscles, sorry, pelvic region, zero negative, they don't involve. Zero, sorry, zero positive, they don't involve. Zero negative, yes, they will involve. Antizitis, it will present in zero negative one and extra articular manifestations it it is giving more of you can say iriitis inflammation of the iris oral ulcers gi ulcers or gi involvement or dermatological features here they give nodules vasculitis see and raynaud phenomena sika i will discuss like what is sika so Okay, before going on to the investigations, guys, like I will talk a little, little, very little about uh, the history, how to take the history. Whenever I, I remember the rheumatology, guys, it always bring in my mind Kaplan Step 2 CK books. In that one, they, they give, in the start, they give a very nice approach how to approach the patient of rheumatology. Or joint problems so simply what we have to in joint problems or in rheumatology we have to see a lot of things number one we are want to see like either the giant joint is involved or not number one if the joint is involved, so either the joint which is involved is single, four, five, or many. Number third, 
either the joints which are involved are small joints or large joints like knee joint is a large joint either there is any symmetry in the involvement or not and then of course we go for examination as well right but before that in examination we always go for to look for extra articular features of course we will examine that joint but we will also look for extra articular features see and because many of these conditions they are associated with many extra articular features so when we don't know them of course how we can make the diagnosis that's the reason we do examine the joint and we do examine the other systems because what we are looking for is the extra articular features so for example take them like screening questions we have to inquire about the pain now you know what are is the pain pattern of the degenerative condition and what is the pain pattern of uh, inflammatory condition <laughs> so first of all see is there any pain is there any stiffness with joints muscles central muscles sorry central bone joints or peripheral joints so of course like Presenting symptoms can be anything like morning stiffness, pain, swelling or loss of function or warmth or redness of any joint, right? So then we, we, we try to figure out by our history taking skills uh, what the patient have. Okay. So when you take about the history, of course, like when you will ask the pain history. So if you remember the mnemonic which I use is sort sara or socrates whatever you like so where is the pain either it's localized or generalized how many joints spine muscles bone uh, either it's continuous either it's intermittent what is the severity what is the timing what is the associate aggravating factors what are the relieving factors okay so see if the person is saying that you know uh, the pain is worse of rest so of course inflammatory if the pain is worse after movement, so degenerative, things like this. Any associated symptoms, any associated neurological symptom, system, symptoms like pain, loss of sensations, loss of power, can point towards any nerve entrapment. Stiffness, stiffness either it's localized or generalized, either it's worse in the morning or worse in the evening, swelling, which area constant episodic then uh, we always ask about the medications we always look for the race of the patient we always ask about the past history family history is very 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 important because most of the conditions are run in families occupational history is also very important because in developed world when the people they have these conditions which are basically limiting their work ability so they get compensation or they get a different job placement so <clears throat> all the things are done okay and of course <coughs> one of the thing is because rheumatoid arthritis for example it gives deformation of the joints and sometimes uh, like you can say in very progressive type of condition the joints are so much deformed like the normal functioning is lost or there can be impairment and uh, there could be disability or the person may be handicapped so and then of course we go for the joint examination of the joint okay uh, one of the thing like again i will talk about the same thing uh, just write gals g a l s uh, this is some sort of you know screening type of exam g for gait a for arms legs l for legs and s for spine so it's a very quick type of examination in which like we can quickly assess the locomotor system and we go in the same way like look feel and move so when you will look you will see either the joint is normal looking either there is when you will feel then then you will move so uh, for example whatever uh, joint you're examining uh, you are going to uh, for the spine, you know, gals, 
So for you will observe the gait, you will check the arms, ask the patient to put your hands behind your head and straight the hands out, put your index fingers on your thumb or things like this. Watch a video of Gal's examination, right? Not more than 10 minutes, it's like around 10 minutes of video. So we examine their spine, we examine their arms, we examine their legs, we examine their gait, we check the range of movement of the of the joints, okay? And if you want to see, again guys, in under the playlist of diagnostics, I put a video of examination of a joint and remember whenever there is any problem with the joint, we always examine one joint above and one joint below. So we go by this way. Now, investigations now. Of course, we will study investigations when we will discuss each and every condition, but the general investigations can be done like CBC, of course, it will tell you about if there is any inflammation going on. Uh, CRP is very, very important for inflammatory conditions. Electrolytes, creatinine and blood urea nitrogen. Why? Because in the drug, there are diseases like SLE and rheumatoid arthritis also, there is kidney involvement. That's why it is written over here. So we can check the complement system. CRP, ferritin is acute phase reactant, albumin, ESR. We can check, do urine analysis for protein urea because of kidney involvement. Serology is very, very important now. Here is the game of all these things. I will talk. So we can do synovial fluid analysis as well. And we can do radiology also to check for the condition of the bones. Now, talking about the serological test, okay, or serum antibody studies. The first one here is autoimmune antibodies. So the first one, like we already know, uh, read about rheumatoid factor, which I told you, these are IgM rheumatoid factors, which we can detect by test, right? And I told you like, you know, that like these are directed against the FC portion of IgG. So what is the importance of this thing? Rheumatoid factor, basically they are, they can be detected in 70% of the patients who have rheumatoid arthritis. But remember, it's not a diagnostic, diagnosed, it is not, if you found rheumatoid factor positive in any patient, it doesn't mean they have rheumatoid arthritis because it can be present in many asymptomatic people as well. You can see over here, NTCCP. So what is NTCCP? It is cyclic citrullinated peptide antibody. So anti-cyclic citrullinated peptide antibodies. So again, like these antibodies, one of my very favorite question and one of the question which is written in Kaplan's and many exams, I saw this question. <laughs> Why it came into my mind because these are highly specific for rheumatoid arthritis. They have high specificity. Okay. So, now, ANA, anti-nuclear antibodies, um, they are present in very, like, a huge number of diseases. But, remember, SLE, Whenever it comes, always think about SLE. This one we always do as a screening test for SLE as well. But it doesn't mean like they cannot occur in any other condition. They can occur in rheumatoid arthritis as well and in many other conditions. Anti-double-stranded DNA antibodies. Now, what are these? Simply as the name shows, it have double-stranded DNA. So these are the antibodies which are directed against the double-stranded DNA. They are the diagnostic of active SLE. Okay. So, whenever like they are positive, they show poor prognosis. So, 
there is there are many examples like anti J O anti Smith anti L A there are ANCAS A and C A which is anti neutrophil cytoplasmic antibodies A and C A there are two types C and K and P and K so uh, C anka or cytoplasmic anka and um, P anka or perinuclear anka. So P for perinuclear and C for cytoplasmic. So they are present in many C and K and P anka. They are present in many vasculitis. For example, C anka are present in Veg Veg Wegener's granulomatosis, whereas P and K can be present in microscopic polyarthritis as well as Schwarz-Strauss syndrome. And then there are many other like antiphospholipid antibodies are also there. So there are many antibodies which we can check in the patients just to see what is the condition the patient may have. One of the investigation which I want to talk about is synovial fluid analysis. What we can do is like we can take the synovial fluid of course by injection. You can see like this one. See they are taking out the fluid from the knee joint or you can see this one they are taking the fluid out from the ankle joint okay so, so of course hyaluronic fluid is an ultra filtrate of plasma plus hyaluronic acid it lubricates joint surface and nourishes articular cartilage and the most important test for hyaluronic fluid are three c's cell count and differential culture and gram staining and crystal examination okay so whenever we take out the synovial fluid we see the color, clarity, viscosity, WBCs, polymorphoneutrophils, gram staining, and these are the examples. Like the normal one is pale yellow, clear, high viscosity, less than 200 WBCs, 10, less than 25% of polymorphoneutrophils. This is what will be the condition of synovial fluid in non inflammatory condition, this one in, in the inflammatory conditions this one in the infections and this one in the hemorrhagic conditions. Of course in infections the WBCs and the polymorphoneutrophils will be raised too much and the color will be yellow to white and it will be opaque. Whereas in inflammatory condition the WBCs and polymorphoneutrophils will increase but not too much. Whereas in the non-inflammatory conditions these cells will not increase. Okay. And in hemorrhagic of course the color will be red. So. This is all about the introduction guys and in a, from the next lecture we will start studying different conditions and in the coming one month I am I hope like we can finish all these lectures. So thank you so much for listening. I will see you around.